John Ferentino. Mr. John Ferentino. The big enchilada, John Ferentino. John Ferentino. John Ferentino. Welcome, John. Keep it going for Carly. Give her a round of applause. <laughs> Guys, ever been on that flow rider? It's like being flushed down the toilet and then slammed into a wall. <laughs> this is a beautiful ship, right? I just got on. Beautiful ship. First cruise ship I ever sighted on my life was built in Helsinki. Two words you never hear when you're on a ship. <laughs> the ship's got a rock climbing wall. And looking at you people, I don't think there's much of a line for it this week. <laughs> Some of you people get in the elevator just to see what day of the week it is. <laughs> the only way they're getting you up that wall is they put the buffet up there. <laughs> you guys eat up in the windjammer? Boy, you gotta be tricky up there. I saw this thing this morning, this little old man, he gets a cup of coffee because walking across the place. Mm -hmm. Mm. Puts his coffee down and decides he's going for a Danish. <laughs> Comes back at the Danish. Mm. Mm. Coffee gone. <laughs> but it didn't stop there. Down went the Danish. <laughs> now he's coming back to the coffee warp speed. <laughs> I'm going, go, go! <laughs> Got all the way back and they took his wife. <laughs> That's a weird place to eat. You make 15 trips, you get your food in front of you, you turn to pick up the salt and pepper, and all of a sudden the ninjas clear the table. <laughs> I had food here a minute ago. Oh, do you guys like uh, Cozumel? Yeah, I like a guy with a good rap. You know, they all try to bargain with you. I walk in, the guy goes, uh, he goes, what's your name? I go, John, he goes, in Spanish, that is Juan. Come into my ship, I want to rip you off. <laughs> And I like the other guys that go, come on into my shop. I got the same crap as everybody else. <laughs> so I was recently on a ship that went to St. Martin, and they had a nude beach there. Have you ever been to a nude beach? It's always the women, yeah. Because when women get out of cold water, they look good. <laughs> when men get out of cold water, they look like women. And if you've never been to a nude beach, you, it's not what you think it's going to be like. Guys going to be like hanging out at Hugh Hefner's house. Women go to be like Chippendale's training camp. Wrong. This is the scariest place you've ever been to in your life. You see things there, you don't even know what they are. All the parts are there, they're just not necessarily in the right places. That beach should be like the airlines, they should have a box. If you can't fit in the box, you're not allowed to take your clothes off. People come to comedians all the time, they go, where do you get your material? Lots of times we just listen to you people. <laughs> These next things I'm going to tell you I swear are true because I couldn't write anything that's funny. I was in Nassau <laughs> a couple of weeks ago. I'm getting off the gangway and a woman turns to her husband and goes, Nassau, can we go see where they shoot the rockets off? <laughs> that I was in Alaska with my daughter. We were whale watching at 5.30 in the morning. It's so foggy, you can't even see the water. I mean, we're standing on the side of the ship and it's just pea soup fog. And all you hear is this captain go, <laughs> The lady next to me turns to her husband and goes, Honey, why do you think the captain's honking that horn? 
And he goes, I'm pretty sure that's how they call the whales. <laughs> and she goes, really? I wouldn't have known that. <laughs> then I was in uh, Nassau again. I was in there and I went into a store that sold fake watches, fake counterfeit handbags, sunglasses. I see a pair of Ray-Bans. I go, how much of those? The guy goes, 25. I'll go, give you 20. He goes, fine. I give him the 20. I got to walk out of the store. He goes, hold on. I turn around. He's checking to see if my bill is real. <laughs> <laughs> and then my favorite, I was at Glacier Bay. We we're in front of the big glacier. <laughs> and there's a little old man, about 90 years old, and was all wrapped up in a blanket, drinking hot chocolate. And his wife sat there and she goes, Saul, Saul, get up. Look at the glacier, Saul. Look at the glacier, Saul. He goes, in a minute. She goes, Saul, get up. Look at the glacier. He goes, I said in a minute. She goes, now, Saul. He goes, I said in a minute. She goes, now. He goes, it's been there for 5,000 years. It'll be there for five more minutes. <laughs> she drags him to the rail. The blanket falls up, and he goes, ice, a lot of ice. <laughs> I had to fly in the night before Cosbella, the night before you guys got there. They put me in this really fancy hotel. So I go out there for two nights. The first night I go out, I go to the bar, drink a little tequila, come back feeling good, get into the Mexican spirit, I go to bed. Wake up the next morning, I got chocolate all over the back of my neck, all over the sheets. I put one of those mints, I didn't know, I fell asleep on it. <laughs> all over the place. <laughs> the next day I go to my room, the, <laughs> the maid says to me, a really broken English, no moments for you, last that you crap on your sheets. <laughs> You guys buy a lot of souvenir crap while you were gone? <laughs> it's like when you go someplace, like when you go to Jamaica, everyone needs a mahogany monkey. I'll show you some of the stupid things I bought in my life. I bought these t-shirts in Cozumel, four for five dollars. <laughs> Double X, that's what they look like the first time I washed them. And my favorite of all time, last summer I was in the Mediterranean <laughs> and I went to Istanbul and I bought this. I live in Manhattan. <laughs> I put this on, people go, taxi? <sighs> oh. I do comedy, I do magic, anything you don't find funny, that'll be the magic part. I'm going to start off, I'm going to do a magic trick, then I'm going to teach you how to do it. Start off like this, take a little red handkerchief, we shake this around a couple of times. You want to do this too many things, times, I think the reason is pretty apparent. Handkerchief goes in your hand, it goes in there once, twice, three times, four times, five times, a whole bunch of times. Push it deep down inside here like this. Wave your hand over the top. This becomes an egg. The silk handkerchief appears here in my pocket. It's a very cool thing till I show you how it works, then you'll go, hey, that's crap. <laughs> it's a fake egg and there's two handkerchiefs. <laughs> oh, shut up, it fooled you the first time. All right, here's how you do. You go to the store, you buy two handkerchiefs. Make sure they are the same color. <laughs> the duplicate one, that's the other one, goes into your pocket. Then you go to a craft store. You buy a plastic egg, cut a hole there about the size of a quarter. You take the other handkerchief and you put it inside. You do not do this in front of the person you're going to show the trick to. <laughs> That's the entire setup. It's an egg with a little tail. Goes in your hand, tail goes under your fingers, hand goes in your pocket. Then you wander around saying, who wants to see a magic trick? Because generally people don't stop you and go, excuse me, do you do anything with an egg? <laughs> you transfer the egg, you pull out the handkerchief, then you shake the handkerchief. Shaking the handkerchief does one of two things. One, it looks kind of magic-y. But the main reason why we do this over here is to keep everybody's eyes off the deformed hand. <laughs> now you take the handkerchief and you start placing what looks like into your hand. You place in there once, twice, three times, four times, five times, a whole bunch of times. We know it's not really going into the hand. Where is it going? Yeah. Into the egg. Make sure the hole is facing up. <laughs> you go back into the pocket, you take out the other handkerchief. And you show the egg. Always keep your hand over the red spot. 
Otherwise, it's not much of a trick. Occasionally, someone in the audience will notice the red spot, and they'll yell out, hey, what's with the red spot? Somebody yell out, and I'll show you what to do. It's nothing. That's what I do. It may not work for you. What you got to do that, boys, you got to take the red spot, and you have to peel it off the egg like this. Then you have to reach out, and you got to take out a glass. That was cool, Mr. Magic. You like impressions? Yeah, I don't do any. So I tried to do one impression. Quick scene from every horror movie you've ever seen. Now. <laughs> Laugh all you want. I put a kid through Yale with this in my head. <laughs> Where this in my head is really stupid. Think about the possibilities of owning this. Stick it in your head, get in your car, get on the interstate. <laughs> Drive as fast as you can. When the cop pulls you over, roll down the window and go, God, have I had a lousy day. <laughs> you got nothing to do 2 o'clock in the morning, stick it in your head, go hang out in a hospital emergency room. <laughs> Just watch everybody else walk in. Everybody looks at you weird become a New Yorker. Walk up to that nurse and go, hey, 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 how long am I supposed to wait here? <laughs> With that guy's with fractured ankles are going, oh, no. <laughs> Summertime in Long Island, where I'm from, got nothing to do, do what I do. Get in my car, drive till I find the most crowded beach I can. Swim out as far as I can, stick this in my head, and just get washed up on the beach. <laughs> and people in New York are kind, too. They come running up and poke you with sticks. Hey, Tony, look, this just came in from Jersey. <laughs> we need a volunteer. We need an adult male to come up. Let's come up. Adult male. <laughs> hey, have a seat. <laughs> Quite a look. <laughs> you do look like a clown. I'm glad you said it. All right. What is your name? Justin. Justin, where are you from? Chicago. Chicago. <laughs> All right. Justin, you've seen the trick where the magician takes a piece of rope and he cuts it, waves his hand over the top, and then what happens? <laughs> What'd you say? <laughs> the magician takes a piece of rope and cuts it, then waves his hand over the top, and then what happens? And then what happens? I'll just show you because you, <laughs> you already ruined the joke. <laughs> All right, look, we take this like this, we cut it, hang on to this. Give me, of course, two equal pieces of rope, more or less. This happens, we take this, we stretch it like this. Bring this over here like this. Tie this in a knot. Bring it like this, put it in my hand. We tap my hand, the rope's back together. All right. All right, but that's not what I want to do. A lot of people think I use a gimmick piece of rope, so what I want you to do, I want you to cut this electric wire. <laughs> I can't. Test, test, test. <laughs> You've been such a great sport, I'm going to make you a lovely little balloon animal. I make over 150 different types of balloon animals. They all look like dogs. Does tricks, look. Sit up. Roll over. 
bark. <laughs> Don't get any pins. Let's give him a nice round of applause. Thanks, buddy. All right, you want to see something neat? Here we go. <laughs> oh, don't piss me off. All right. All right, here we go. Ooh. Ah. Ooh. Thanks. It's not much. It's something I'm working on. All right. I need a female volunteer. I want to come up. Female volunteer. Tell female. Yeah, come on up. Don't be afraid. What is your name? Colleen. Colleen, have a seat. Colleen, do you believe in mentalism? ESP, telekinesis. ESPN. Good. Let me explain it to you. <laughs> You ever sit down the phone rings, you go to pick it up, you sort of know who's there? That's called caller ID. <laughs> we have an ordinary deck of cards, 52 cards all different from one another, correct? That's how we tell them all apart. What I want you to do, take one card out of the deck, do not let me influence your decision. Any card you want, just go for it. Which one? <laughs> Good choice. Now take the card, memorize it. Return it anywhere you want in the deck. Good. Saves a lot of time. I can't believe the car's going to zoom out of this deck. It's going to travel around the room, not once, not twice, but three times. It's going to come out of that light, and you're going to be sitting on top of the card you just picked. I'll ask you to stand up, and you tell me whether the card is there, yes or no. Ready? Here we go. Watch. I can't see it. I'm just visualizing. Stand up. Tell me whether the card is there, yes or no. Yeah, it would be cool if I could have done that. All right. <laughs> I will get your card to jump to the top. What was your card? Um, three of spades. Three of spades. That wasn't really your card. Shut up. What was your card? Ten of hearts. Ten of hearts? Watch. Boom. Now it did it jump to the top, but it magically changed to the ace of spades. <laughs> it's a little tricky to do when you get home. Three-year-old kids will look at you and go, what the hell was that? All right, here's the real trick. I'm going to go through the cards like this. You just tell me when to stop. Ready? Stop. I didn't even start. Stop. Let's see. Uh, tell me what? Let me, let me start, all right? Here we go. Stop. Okay, take the card like this. Do not look at it. Put your hand right over the top like this. One minute, you're going to stand up and face that way. I'm going to face this way. We're going to stand shoulder to shoulder, back to back. This way, you can hold the card out in front of you, get a good look, and you know that I can't see it. So stand up. Turn around like this. Do not look at the card yet. Put your shoulders against mine. Hold the card up. Get a good look at the card. <laughs> All right, good. All right, now. Now sit on the card face up. Because in this envelope that is clearly marked, danger, spooky stuff inside. I have some predictions that I knew about her before we met her. So here's how we play the game. When I hold the envelope as a group, we scream out as loud as we possibly can, danger. I turn this over, we go, spooky stuff inside. I stand there like this, and we go, ooh. We're going to do this once. It's a little dress rehearsal. Give me any attitude problem. We're here till 3 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> Don't be the person that keeps the whole group here. Here we go. In this envelope, that's clearly marked. Danger. Spooky stuff inside. Ooh. That's pretty good. A tear in my eye. All right, make like you never saw this. We're now going to attempt to read her mind. Let's review. She's had free selection of any card. She's sitting on one card face up. It is my job to determine what that card could possibly be. I put your all the way back. Open your mouth really wide. Still sitting on the card, right? All right, that's not going to work. Hi. Right. Second part, when I go, but it doesn't matter, you go, no. Looks like that doesn't work, but it doesn't matter. No. Because in this envelope, that's clearly marked. Danger. Spooky stuff inside. Ooh, 
Well, I got the prediction. I'm going to tell everyone what the card is. You're going to tell them whether I'm right or wrong. It was a rectangular card. It was a playing card. Two for two. It's called creating cheap suspense. It's a rectangular card. A playing card wasn't a low card. It was a high card. It was actually a picture card. Ladies and gentlemen, her card was the Queen of Hearts. Is that it? <laughs> Seriously? It was a card. King of Clubs. Near, 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 near. Did it look like this? <laughs> hey, don't be real impressed, all right? <laughs> Let's give her a nice big round of applause. <laughs> Thanks. Here we go, it's called a vanishing champagne bottle. Place the bottle right inside the bag, we went to the pocket for a little magic wiffle dust. Looks like ordinary pocket lint. Wiffle, 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 wiffle. That'll be your park, it's crowd that wiffles together, gets good weather. Here we go. Whoa, something's happening. I'm shaking the bag. Gone. Of course, they say the hardest thing to imagine is something to come back after it's gone. Wiffle, wiffle. Back. Okay, a lot of people think I hold the bottle through the bottom of the bed. Others are brain dead. It's not true. The bottle goes right inside the bed. No time is my hand ever going to go near the bottom. Watch. Wiffle, wiffle. Gone again. Oh, whoa, wow, I fell for a rubber bottle. <laughs> All right, I got to go, so I'm going to leave you with a quick thing. I'm going to show you an illusion. Not this, this is a glove. Clearly, <laughs> I was in Alabama. A guy goes, that's no illusion, that's a glove. <laughs> right, your house has tires. All right. <laughs> And if you didn't get that joke, you're walking around your stateroom going, this is huge. <laughs> Here you go. It's a perfect illusion. This is how magic works. Your eyes see something that's not really there. It's a fake arm, fake hand, and your real hand just goes in there just like that. How much fun to have this in your high school? I see make you take that shop class. Excuse me. Excuse me, can we go over the power tools one more time? <laughs> you put this on your hand and you go to any Walmart, you just run through the store going, Manager! <laughs> <laughs> All right, you want to see something neat? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Here we go, it's called the Vanishing Steel Pipe Illusion. We start off with a 10-inch solid steel bar. Clang, clang, clang. <laughs> it's important to prove it's all real. Say the magic words. Doo -doo -doo. <laughs> I'll be working on that. My name is John Fertino. I hope you have a safe trip home. You've been a great audience. Good night.